Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. The Emergency Rental Assistance Program, or ERA, made funding available to tribal governments and tribally designated housing entities, or TDAPs. And the ERA funding assists households that were unable to pay rent or utilities. Many of you on this webinar took a human-centered design approach to better understand the needs of your people, your community, and landlords to create a more impactful ERA program for your people. So today's session is intended to provide an overview and walkthrough of the refresh treasury portal that recipients of ERA funds will use to submit their quarterly reports. So we're going to go over how you report the data. During today's webinar, I'm gonna cover three main topics. Real quick, I'm gonna go over the reporting resources available that you can download to supplement today's session, including a step-by-step -step guide. I'm also gonna talk over an overview of the reporting requirements and updates we've made to reporting, as well as how to prepare for, to actually do the report. What do you need to get to start the report? Finally, we're gonna spend the majority of our time together doing a live demonstration of the portal. Okay, so before we get started on the details of compliance reporting, I wanna point out a few helpful resources. So if you have specific questions around allowable uses, the program or other compliance or reporting matters, the FAQs and fact sheets are your best sources of information. And they're posted along with other helpful information about the program on the ERA website listed here. This website also includes the ERA reporting guidance that complements today's session, as well as a detailed user guide that describes the process to submit information on Treasury's portal. And finally, if you have a general questions, you can email us at the emergency rental assistance at treasury.gov. The reporting guidance overview is a great document. It provides general clarifications, including further explanations on some of the terminology used, such as subawards, contractors, and beneficiary profiles. It also covers recording payments in the portal to beneficiaries, along with reporting deadlines specific to tribes and TDAPs and other clarifications. And this document is continuously updated based on user feedback. In addition to the reporting guidance, Treasury has released several resources to assist recipients in submitting their quarterly reports. These resources include a reporting guidance, and that outlines all of your reporting requirements when accepting ERA funds. It also includes a detailed user guide that includes step-by-step -step guidance for submitting the required quarterly reports using Treasury's portal. Instructions on accessing Treasury's portal using either login.gov or id.me, which we'll go over next. Instructions on setting up the ERA program's point of contact on Treasury's portal. And special tip documentation that provides additional guidance on ERA reporting. Now let's quickly go over how to log into the portal. And I wanna talk about a big update we've incorporated into Treasury's portal. It reflects feedback from tribal governments and others that have challenges accessing the portal. Recipients can now log into the portal using login.gov, which is much more simplified. It's a much easier process for creating an account and accessing the portal. And further information on how to log in is included in this link. If you already have access to Treasury's portal using id.me, you're not required to use login.gov, and you can continue accessing that, the portal through records on id.me. Users can sign in using a pre-existing account or choose the create a new account option for login.gov. It's a very quick process. Before you start the reporting within the portal, be sure you have the necessary data available. The data required for the report includes both financial data as well as programmatic data. And so some of the reports that you might find helpful to complete the portal information report include a general ledger detail report from your accounting software, and that'll help make the process much easier. You may wanna create a saved report or queries within your accounting software that has the required data for the compliance report. And that'll allow you to easily run the report quarter after quarter. 
You should also have at the ready a breakdown of expenditures by GL code related to how much your tribe or your TDHE is supported in rent, utilities, arrears, housing stability services, other expenses related to housing and administrative costs. If you've not recorded uh, these costs by GL code separately, work with the program director to get this data at the ready. So keep in mind, uh, last category on here is the administrative costs, that not more than 10% of the tribe's award can be used for direct and indirect admin costs. In addition to the GL detail from your accounting software, uh, a report for your, from your vendors will also assist you in completing a few of these sections related to the contract, direct payments, and subrecipient awards for businesses, corporations, uh, landlords, and other nonprofits that receive ERA benefits valued over $30,000. So those are obligations over $30,000. Uh, while we're on the topic, you are not required to create records for individual people tenants, or unincorporated small landlords regardless of the amount of ERA benefit payment. That's a frequently asked question. Do we have to enter in every vendor? No, you don't. Only those vendors that where you've obligated more than $30,000. So in addition to financial data from your accounting software, the quarterly reports uh, also collect programmatic data. I find it helpful to type out the narrative performance section in a Word document and then just easily copy and paste or upload that. We will now cover an overview of the required sections in the portal. And those sections include the reporting guidance, bulk upload templates and instructions, recipient profile, project overview, subrecipient contractors and beneficiaries, recipients, subawards, contracts, and direct payments, expenditures, project data and participant demographics, performance and financial reporting, and report certification and submission. So let's get into the portal. All right, so upon logging into the system, either using id.me or login.gov, you'll be brought to this page. We're gonna click the state, local, and tribal support. This will bring us to this website, which will list out each of the American Rescue Plan Act funds. We're gonna go over to the compliance report section. If you have user permissions to the SLFRS compliance reporting, that will be on top. But we're gonna focus our time on the emergency rental assistance compliance report. This section here will list each of your quarterly reports uh, submitted or that are still in draft for the past period. I am in a test database, so I'm gonna select my quarterly report here. Again, this brings us to each of these report sections on this left navigation bar, and we're gonna go through each of these to complete the compliance report. The first tab is the ERA report guidance. And the purpose of this tab is to provide recipients with the latest updates on guidance. There's really no action for you. This is the easiest part. The next tab brings us to the bulk upload templates and instructions. Each template can be downloaded here. And the purpose of this tab is to provide you with easy access to all the ERA bulk upload template documents that are used for the ERA quarterly report. Those templates are used for uploading information on vendors, so the subrecipients, contractors, and beneficiaries where you've obligated more than $30,000. Now for most tribes, most PDATs, you're gonna have very few of these records per quarter. Uh, therefore, these templates might not be used for tribes or TEHs, and they might not be as useful as they would be for local governments that are spending millions of dollars per quarter. Where the templates might be useful is for those tribes that um, have limited access to broadband. You can fill out these templates offline and then upload them to the portal when you do have access to internet. So for the most part, most tribes may not use these templates. Before we go on to the next section, recipient profile, I wanna point out in this right-hand side, 
I'm going to test database, but in your real portal, uh, this will show you your project information, your grant information. It'll show your CFDA number, the date you were awarded the funds, the reporting period that we're in, uh, the submission deadline, as well as the grant funds received. So next year, when you are working on your audit and you need the CFDA number and your award amount, uh, if you're working on the schedule of expenditure of federal awards or your CFA, you can come in here and easily see that information. All right, I'm gonna click the next button and that brings us to next one, recipient profile. By the way, uh, you can hop around in each of these sections at any time. So the recipient profile tab includes two segments, ERA, recipient information, and the point of contact list. And the purpose of this section is really just for you to validate your information. So here it would show your tribe name or your TDHE, your address, your UEI number, and you may notice that the DUNS number was replaced by the UEI number. Uh, starting in April of 2022, the federal government stopped using DUNS numbers to uniquely identify entities. Your tribe's UEI uh, is located below the DUNS number on your entity registration records within SAM.gov. If you see any errors on this page, you can use this text box to add data. Finally, at the bottom of the page is your list of point of contact. Please verify and update this information so that Treasury has the most up-to-date information with regards to your ERA project. It's also the list that we use to send out email broadcasts on new information as it's being released. When you're finished, you can click the next button. That brings us to the project overview tab. This tab divided into five sections, my project, ERA recipient information, ERA project description, system for prioritizing assistance, and use of a fact-based proxy for determining eligibility. And this purpose of this module is to collect relevant information for your ERA program. And the information submitted in this module will carry over from quarter after quarter. And you'll have the opportunity to review and update on a quarterly basis. Here, uh, likely your project ID will match your fund code in your accounting software, and your project name will be your uh, emergency rental assistance project. So likely you'll have one project on the screen unless you've applied for other funds with the state, uh, in which case you would have been awarded another ERA award. And you'll separate those out by project ID in your accounting software as to not commingle funds. So for most tribes, you'll have one project, and you're really just reviewing the data uh, and updating as necessary. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click the next button. That brings us to the subrecipients, contractors, and beneficiary page. I'm going to repeat uh, information I shared earlier, as there's been a lot of confusion around the screen. You only need to enter in subrecipient contractors and beneficiaries for those where you've obligated $30,000 or more. So for again, uh, individual people, we would not enter that information in here. So this tab is divided into uh, uh, two sections. The top section is where we'll enter in the demographic data, and the second section is where we're able to see information added. So we have to enter in either UEI or a tax ID number, and at least one of those must be filled out. So as an example, we'll enter in uh, a uh, landlord, and I will enter in Landlord Incorporated. And entering in an address. And state. 
and zip code. Okay, and there's a question here. Is the subrecipient contractor or beneficiary registered in SAM.gov? So the options are yes, no, and NA. So I'll put no, and then the preceding question, uh, if I select no, uh, if I know the information, in the preceding fiscal year, did the subrecipient receive 80% or more of its annual gross revenue from federal funds? So maybe I know that, I'll click no. Uh, in the preceding fiscal year, did subrecipient receive 25 million or more from federal funds? And maybe um, I'll click no for that too. Then I'll click create a contractor or beneficiary record. And I have an error message because the tax ID number must have nine numbers and um, it, the system knows that I didn't type in a nine digit tax ID number. Earlier we talked about the bulk upload templates, the Excel spreadsheet. If I have a lot of vendors, I might choose to download the templates either in this screen or that prior screen, fill those out, and then I can upload them here. For, again, for most tribal governments, uh, you're going to be doing data entry in the template, so it may be easier for you to do the data entry in here. After I've entered in all of my vendors um, where I have sent, our, sorry, where I've obligated 30,000 or more, I can hit the next. I want to be clear on here uh, the terminology of subrecipient, contractor, and beneficiary. Uh, a subrecipient is a pass-through entity where the tribe or the TDAT is providing funds to the organization to carry out a programmatic function of ERA. Let's say, for example, we have outsourced the administrative functions of ERA uh, for an outside company to review the applications uh, and process payments. That would be an example of a subrecipient. A contractor uh, is hired to provide services or goods to the tribe or TDAT in a procurement transaction, likely where there's a contract in place. And finally, a beneficiary, that's an entity uh, that received a direct payment from the ERA recipient. And that could be related to a household tenant, a landlord, uh, a utility provider, um, or a, a vendor for another housing-related expense. For example, uh, perhaps hotel stays or, or uh, internet services where we obligated more than 30,000. So uh, when I'm done entering in all my subrecipient contractors or beneficiaries, I can hit the next button. And that brings me to the screen of subawards, contracts, or direct payments. This is also related to those vendors where we've obligated more than 30,000. Here, I would go ahead and enter in um, the detailed information related to that vendor. So I can search for Landlord Incorporated. I can put the period place of performance address. So um, I will put make up an address here. And then I've got to put in the subaward contract or direct payment number. And this number should coincide to the transaction number within your accounting software. So uh, perhaps that's the invoice number, the purchase order, the contract number uh, for easy record keeping. So earlier we talked about how to prepare for the report. The vendor report would be a good one to have export into your accounting software. So you're really just looking back and forth from your vendor report to the portal. So I will say that this is a, um, a direct payment and the amount I've obligated uh, this quarter, maybe that's 33,000 and paid them on March 9th and then I'd enter in the performance start and end date. I do need to provide a brief description 
of how this is related to the ERA funds. So I can say, um, rental assistance direct payment for eligible tenants. And I can go ahead and save this. And you notice that uh, similar to the previous screen, we could have uploaded a template. So there's a template related to the subaward contract and direct payments. And then all of my subaward contracts and direct payments that I've entered over time will be listed down here. And I can click this button here to view uh, this information as well as any previous information. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the next button. Next brings us to the expenditures. And in this expenditures, the top part of the screen is asking for the details of those payments, about 30,000 or more. And then uh, similarly, I can do a bulk upload. So here, I will go ahead and search for my sub award number. And it automatically populates uh, the contract number. I'll put in the expenditures. So I have signed that in um, mid-March through the end of the period. And my expenditure amount matches my obligation amount of 33,000. And this is the category of expenses. And we paid landlord incorporated based on rent, but it can also choose rent arrears, home energy costs, housing stability, administrative costs, and other. Again, if this was an administrative cost over, where the value of the obligation is over 30,000, uh, just a reminder, the maximum amount of administrative costs is 10% of your award. Okay, and then uh, if I did choose administrative costs, if that was what this company was related to, I could type in here, perhaps I've outsourced, you know, the review of applications, um, payments and so on, whatever that narrative is there. Similarly, you can bulk upload using the template um, if you do not want to type the information in. And then down here, as we scroll down in the third section is where we're going to enter in the obligations and total expenditures for those valued less than 30,000. And we're entering them in in a lump sum or an aggregate. So here I would go ahead and select uh, the individual categories, the type, and then I would type in in lump sum all the other expenditures outside of those $30,000 vendors. I would then hit save entry. Okay. Finally, the fourth section on here is the recipient obligation expenditures to individuals, to people uh, that are valued either above 30,000 or below 30,000. So everything related to individuals is down here. And you would similarly enter in the categories of those and the lump sum obligation and expenditures by category. You could also use the template to do that if that's the preferred method. After you've entered in all the information, um, below would, would be a would be a, a listing of all of those expenditures. When you've entered in all the expenses, those that are above 30,000, where there's subawards, contracts, and direct payments for the obligations above 30,000, those below 30,000 for uh, subawards, contracts, and direct payments, and payments to individuals, you can hit the next button. That then brings us to project data and participant demographics. And this module is divided into four sections, ERA applicants, ERA assistance provided, uh, participant households at certain income levels, and ERA amounts approved and amounts paid in the current reporting period. And the purpose of this module is to collect key matrix for the ERA program. And so more to the other screens, the module has to be updated each quarter uh, to indicate your progress in providing ERA financial assistance to your tribal community. 
So here is where we would enter in the number of unique households that completed and submitted applications, number of unique households that received assistance in the reporting period, and the number of households that received their initial ERA assistance in the reporting period. Below is the ERA assistance provided. And if it's not applicable, you can always enter zero. And this helps Treasury again understand the ERA program um, and how it's helping the public. This last section, ERA amounts approved or obligated and amounts paid or extended in the reporting period is the financial data. To enter the financial data here, total dollar amount of ERA funds expended or approved and so on uh, by category. And then you're gonna save this and hit the next button. This brings us to the performance and financial reporting. And this module is also divided into four parts. The performance narrative, the narrative on effective practices, the federal financial reporting, and the recipient comments. And some of these sections allow you to upload a direct file if you prefer to type this in a Word document or you want to provide other data such as your application. And it's also updated each quarter. So here, the first section is your performance narrative. So activities planned and uh, implemented uh, each quarter. Perhaps you want to update on the great new things that have happened. Um, maybe you've brought the application online. You partnered with social services to identify symptoms in need. Maybe you created a specific email address uh, so that citizens can contact your tribe or TDAC with ERA. So that's where you're gonna enter these new things um, that have happened this past quarter. Next is the narrative on effective practices. So um, uh, what kind of practices did you use to ensure that ERA assistance is getting to those that are in need. And finally, the federal financial assistance report. This section here might look a little different than the last time you did your quarterly report. Uh, this quarter, Treasury removed the requirement to complete the SF-425 for ERA programs. And in its place, we simplified it, and we asked that you provide the information for the fields you see here. And these align with the amounts previously reported in the SF-425. The bottom half with the current quarter obligation um, here is cumulative. And you can use this as a check feature to make sure everything aligns. So looking at that GL detail report that you used to prepare for this report and comparing it to ensure that those numbers in your accounting software match these numbers here on what uh, you have left to obligate, your expenditures, and what's been um, already obligated. Finally, in this final section, there's a comment box, and that's provided for you to give general feedback. And this could be feedback on the portal or anything else in the program uh, you think would be helpful for Treasury. You could also upload a file if you prefer that. When all your narrative text or files have been entered, you're gonna click the next button and navigate to the next tab. This is the final tab in the portal, and this is the report certification and submission, and only your designated authorized representative for reporting uh, can e-sign the certification for final submission of the quarterly report. If at any time uh, you would like to go back to one of the sections to edit, to check your work, you can. Uh, just because you got to the report certification and submission section does not mean that you can't go back and add or edit other information. You can hop around here at any time. Okay, when you've reviewed your data and you believe everything entered is correct, you can click the certify button to agree to the statement. A window is gonna pop up uh, to ensure we're ready to submit and we can click the submit button. If there's any errors in the system, um, that's gonna pop up here in red and we can go back and correct any of those errors. We have the opportunity to address those. And once we've corrected those, we can submit again to successfully complete the quarterly report process. I'm in a test database, so there are some test records in here that I'd need to take some time to correct. 
Once you submit it, uh, congratulations, you completed your report for the current reporting period. Thank you again for the good work that you're doing for your community and your support of the ERA program and partnering with Treasury and providing much needed rental assistance to tribal communities. Thank you again, signing off.